Today we'll attempt to build the very first 3D printer that also works underwater. Over the past five years, we made a lot of underwater devices using 3D printing. And recently, we wanted to improve the print quality of our 3D printer named Aga. So we decided that the only logical solution to this problem is better cooling. And what's better at cooling than air? That's right, water is the ultimate solution. I think we should transition all of our workshop to be able to work underwater at some point. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Peter? Uh, okay, so if you don't know, the type of 3D printing we'll attempt underwater comes down to extruding melted plastic so that it forms a layer and then placing another layer on top of it so that over time you are left with a solid object. When printing large angles though, it's common for the plastic to droop down because it's still warm and soft. That's why when printing underwater, the water will help us by instantly cooling the plastic down and making it solid. So, I think we should start with buying an aquarium. <laughs> Is it perfect or what? I think so. We also decided to buy deionized water, just to be safe at the beginning, since it's less conductive. So, it turns out we have to practically disassemble the entire printer to swap most of the components. Let's start with quick fixes and then we'll get to the harder stuff later. The first quick fix is the motors. Here are the stepper motors. They enable the printer to move in all three axes as well as extrude the plastic filament through the nozzle here. We need to secure them against our first opponent. Short circuiting. So we opened each one of those and covered all the pins in this one minute epoxy. Do you certify this? <laughs> Next one is end stops, which are these small switches that detect when the extruder touches the wall. We just bought this cool looking IP67 version. Now the heat bed, which is the heated surface on top of which the print sits on. I also wanted to use a 1 minute epoxy to seal this connection here, but on accident I overshot by 135 times and used this 135 minute epoxy, so now it's ready. Here's our second opponent, corrosion. Almost every material that corrodes quickly needs to be replaced. That's why we bought these plastic linear bearings instead of the metal ones. And yes, the bearings inside the stepper motors will also corrode, but there's no quick way to fix them, and they should be able to work for quite some time anyway. There's also the bottom frame of the printer, which we swapped for a plastic one. So let's go. We decided that some of the components should be outside of the aquarium, at least before we go to the pool. So for the display, I just splashed through the back of it and printed these two parts that mounted on the side of the glass. And for the same reason, we need to keep the power supply unit away from water in this waterproof case, connected with a long cable. Now let's test it underwater. Just kidding, don't do that or you're gonna die. <laughs> awesome, now we can get to the harder stuff and we start with the most crucial part of this entire printer, the extruder. This motor here moves the filament down through a tube and a heatsink here. Then it travels through a heat block where it heats up and then is extruded through a thin nozzle. Previously I mentioned that the water cooling is a good thing. That's why we can get rid of the fan that cools the heatsink and also the fan that cools the print right below the nozzle. However, on the other hand, cooling is also our final, third opponent. Too much cooling means that the filament won't be able to soften enough to be extruded. That's why we'll cover the entire heat block in this thick silicone insulation, leaving only the tiny tip of the nozzle. So we printed this thing, which we'll call the nozzle bath. You just insert the heating element and the thermistor into the heat block, insert the nozzle bath and pour in the silicone. 
I'm just gonna cover all my problems in silicone. Something like that. I think that's perfect. After it solidifies, you're done. Now, some people really care about the moisture inside their filament. 3D printing wet filament. Stringing, bubbles and oozing nozzles are all an indication of a wet filament. But we happily decided to ignore this issue. I mean, if we at least keep the spool of the filament above the water, no water will soak into it. <laughs> the bigger problem might be caused by the water that will flow in between the filament and the tube in the extruder. The water vapor will need to go somewhere, right? Nonetheless, we hope that this water in the extruder issue won't pose any issues. Let's commence the test. Station. We decided to manually push the filament through the extruder at first, so that we don't have to submerge the entire printer just yet. Oh, it's flowing out. Huh? It's working. Yeah. <laughs> You're a printer. It's going better than I than I thought it would. Yeah, actually. Then we tested sticking a 3D print onto plastic. It's more of a poop, this one. <laughs> it's sticking, it's sticking pretty well. I call 3D printing underwater possible. After this promising test, and after we placed the extruder on its place, we saw an unexpected problem. The problem is this. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Uh, what, are, what are our options? We can cut it. Wait, wait a second. Do it. Oh, huh. Works. Works. Crisis averted. Now the only thing left is the last upgrade. What's the last upgrade? the main board. This is the brains of the printer. We should have a relatively easy solution for waterproofing the entire thing. Put the board in the box, connect every single component and do not miss any of the cables and cover it all in a potting compound. Blue goo. And this is a simple MOSFET PCB, which allows us to run the hot end heater on higher voltage. Pretty useful when you need to heat something underwater. After one night, it's all nice and solid. So, we have the printer and the aquarium. What's the next step? We can finally test it underwater. <laughs> this is. <laughs> okay, let's print something actually. If it's gonna stick to the bed, that's gonna be amazing. If the layers are gonna stick to each other, this is gonna be impossible. Oh, it actually sticks now. Huh. No way. No way. <laughs> No way. Come on, dude. There's no way. <laughs> it's not possible. There's no way. There's just no way. I, I just don't believe it. <laughs> Screw you, haters. Screw you, RC test flight. Yeah, he said it's not gonna work. Something must go wrong, right? Yes. Like, it's gonna just print the entire thing. Oh, the another layer started. And now it's bridging. It's actually incredible that every single upgrade we did so far worked out just like that. It seemed like we're gonna do this first try. Or do we? Oh, crap. Yeah, the connector from one of the power supplies just disconnected. Oh, really? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> really? We're so close to printing an entire print on the first try. The bed adhesion was perfect and the print looked pretty alright. 
At least this was just a quick fix, however, when we tried printing the Benchy all over again multiple times, we couldn't possibly get it to work again. It seemed as if the layers did not want to stick to each other anymore. We realized what happened, the silicone insulating the heat block just wasn't made for such high temperatures. Yeah, it's like our life expectancy decreased by about 10 years this week. The water got under the silicone insulation and cooled the extruder to the point that the heater didn't even have a chance to heat it up. Let's get the printer to work again with this new high temperature rated red silicone inside the nozzle bath. It's a lot less liquid than the previous one. It's like Nutella, look. <laughs> Unfortunately, after we came back three days later, the silicone was still soft on the inside, and when it heated up, it expanded and started to protrude below the nozzle level, which makes it unusable. Now we can cut it. So we cut it. We are ready for the first ever proper underwater print. Now let's actually try to compare our underwater prints to the normal overwater prints. Peter, can you please explain all of the quirks and features? Thanks Philip, so comparing it to a Benji printed on our non-underwater Prusa printer it looks basically the same, though the underwater print had some stringing we needed to clean up. The layer adhesion of the underwater print is also much worse. We couldn't really see a difference with cooling though. The overhangs of both prints were looking basically the same and both were spot on. So the next print we did was an overhang performance test. It challenges your printer with doing multiple overhangs all the way from 20 degrees up to 80 degrees. Of course, at this point you can probably guess that it printed without any problems whatsoever. Did it stick well? Yes, pretty well. Once the printing finished though, I could see that there was a small layer shift at the beginning of the prints, nothing too significant though. Comparing it to the non-underwater 3D prints, you can see a clear difference in the cooling performance. The 80 degree overhang of the underwater print is not perfect, but it is far superior. The underwater print also has a small crack in the middle of the 30 degree overhang, the nozzle must have been jumped for a second. Before we print some more, we need to fix this wonky nozzle bath, because it deteriorates pretty quickly and we have a literal swimming pool scheduled two days from now, so we actually came to a genius hypothesis. The transparent epoxy resin we use for making our underwater drones is the ultimate material for the heat block insulation. You know, I have no idea how we didn't think of this before. Well, my tests must have been wrong, because it's smoking again. We have no choice but to go with it. It's still better than the first nozzle bath. The first thing we did is a bridging test. We wanted to see if this printer can form a bridge between these two platforms 23 centimeters apart. Oh, oh yeah, it's going. <laughs> it's going. And it's going well. To our surprise, the new epoxy heat block didn't seem like too much of a problem to our underwater 3D printer. This massive bridge was completed without too many problems, but once more layers were added to it, it started sagging down a little bit. Comparing the two prints together, they look very similar, but the one printed underwater is a little bit nicer in the overhang areas. I think that in this print it's not better cooling that helped to achieve a better result. It's actually the fact that plastic in the water is much more buoyant than in the air, so each piece of plastic is effectively lighter. Hence, the bridge sagged down less when it was printed underwater. Oh, and there is also one more feature of underwater 3D printing. It was 2 hours 33 minutes for this. <laughs> it's heavy. You can't really hear the water inside, just because... Um, there's no air inside. <laughs> the prints are full of water, unlike the non-underwater prints. Okay now, let's be honest. 
everybody can print in an aquarium, but let's do something actually useful. Let's go print in a swimming pool. To do this, we'll need a battery operated printer. Three, two, one. It will last for about one hour of printing. We also need to be able to submerge the printer's screen underwater. While I was shopping, I found this lunchbox, which should be perfect. Okay, now the printer is both waterproof and wireless. Let's go to the pool. Look inconspicuous, alright? Uważaj, żeby... Clearly we like building underwater stuff, and if you like that too, you should also like our 3D printed underwater drone, which we teach how to build in our CPS5 online course. It's taught by us to already over 400 students. Me and Peter personally help you complete this project in case you hit any roadblocks along the way. You buy the components off of the list, follow step-by-step -step instructions, and finish with an actual capable underwater drone. Check out cpsdrone.com. Now let's see what we can do in the pool. We saw that the first layer stuck to the heat bed quite well on the first try, but for some reason the spool kept falling off. We constantly kept fixing it until we realized that it's the water jet coming from this wall. When it comes to the print, yeah, it didn't work. Turns out, after a week of constant printing, it just slowly stops working. Specifically for two reasons. First reason is that by this point the motors corroded so much that they started to randomly jam. And the second reason is that our epoxy heat lock deteriorated a lot by this point. I don't want people to see this. <laughs> don't worry though, we think that underwater 3D printing can be much more reliable with a couple of improvements. 1. Use a better material for heat block insulation, like high temperature epoxy. 2. Find a way to make the stepper motors fully waterproof so that they don't start to jump. And 3. Try to heat up the water just below the glass transition temperature of your filament. This should improve the layer adhesion. Cheers!